Travis Wayne Goodsell. Didn't hear the click. Uh, uh, if you don't know Christian history about how Christianity got started under Constantine, as Constantine created a brand new God and created a brand new Greek word to describe the brand new God, Hamusius. And anybody who thinks they know how to define it and there have been many for the several or the couple millennia who have come out and said, "Oh, it's it's related to this word, it's related to that word." No, it's not. He made it up. It's not related. <clears throat> and so, if you don't understand that as Mormons. When you go out on your missions and you talk about the apostasy that happened with the death of Jesus and the twelve apostles, that the priesthood was gone from the face of the earth, even though uh, John the Revelator didn't really die. And if you obviously believe the Book of Mormon to be an actual, real history, and therefore didn't die. Oh, no, no. Afterwards, they were resurrected. No, not John the Revelator. He was transfigured. Translated. And so, yeah, lots of confusion. But if you don't understand the apostasy concept of the creation of a new God, and even creating a new word to define your new God, you're not going to recognize man-made religions. <clears throat> and so when Joseph Smith comes along, as we read over his scriptures, we see lots of different names, and there's somewhat of a confusion as a result. You know, is Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ? Is he Jehovah? Is he supposed to be Son Amun? Which one is it? And without knowing the big picture, uh, you'll just live in confusion and wait for the prophets to tell you what to believe. And I'm pretty sure the church has failed to suppress uh, the knowledge of Brigham Young creating a brand new God for Mormons. Even though there are Mormon apologists who say, oh no, 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 he, that's not what he said. <laughs> it was the fake journals, blah, blah, blah. No, uh-uh. There's a reason why Orson Hyde was demoted the year before ben, uh, Young died so that John Taylor would succeed. And it was because Orson Hyde said, oh hell no, that ain't our God. <laughs> and Brigham Young said, oh hell yes he is. And they had conference debates in front of Mormons as well as in private closed door sessions. He was pissing off Brigham Young. So, no, Brigham Young did actually create Adam as our Heavenly Father. And thus, the Father of Jesus Christ, having literal sex with Mary. And if you do not know that as a Mormon, the church has succeeded in suppressing that information from you. Because Kimball and then Hinckley both got up in their conferences as presidents of the church and denounced Brigham Young's Adam God theory. And so the current church has hinge pointed away from Brigham Young's created God. But in so doing, they 
didn't go back to Joseph Smith's God. They instead chose the Christian God, specifically evangelical Christians, but turning the Joseph Smith history into a real history. And you're going, what? Because if Trinity is fake, then Trinity Jesus is not who is being talked about. But Mormons no longer call him Son Amun, no longer uh, refer to him as Jehovah except in the temple, and Mormons are led to believe that that's all that's the the secret name, the, the spirit name of Jesus, and his earth name is Jesus. And then that leads to other doctrinal errors <laughs> going down the wrong path in the midst of darkness towards the great and spacious Mormon building. <clears throat> you see, you can't just create your own God and say, oh, nope, that is, that's him, that's it, that's our God, and everybody will worship him, or I will put a thumbs down on your video. <laughs> and send you death threats and destroy your, your whole family. As you can see, the Middle East, between Muslims of Hamas, Palestine, and Israel, are in such a situation. They refuse to acknowledge the others as human beings. But, as uh, I was involved with uh, the, uh, the footnoting project for what got released in 2009 for the foreign language editions, with guide to the scriptures instead of Bible dictionary and, and topical guide, I was among the most prominent scholars the church has, as I was one of them. And they were uh, discussing, as we got to those passages, <coughs> about the Mormon myth of who this person is. And yet I found it strange that they believed that uh, a man in the Mormon church, as Ezekiel calls him David, whereas the other places say he will be a descendant of David, <coughs> believed that his name would be David and uh, they would all uh, support that as doctrinally correct, they would not reference it in the footnotes, though. They would not educate Mormons as to this person who is clearly prophesied for our latter days. And yet, Despite this, the prophecy of Moses in Deuteronomy, which uh, Joseph Smith brings up in his history that is canonized, uh, is understood as Jesus, as Mormons understand it, with the first vision as an actual history of Heavenly Father, no longer Adam, and Jesus Christ. And, and yet, the, uh, they did not quite make the connection. It was just a speculation that they just threw out there as if it were something unknown. And uh, so section 85, for example, the one mighty and strong, 
everybody knew and understood that verse 8 is the president of the church. But in some distant future, obviously, because the current ones are all good and true. <laughs> and, uh, and then you get into section 103, verse 16. And uh, Mormons generally in the church have understood, well, the president of the church is the one who is like Moses. Nobody else, despite certain messiahs rising up from Mormonism, such as Brian David Mitchell, who believes there is such a person, like the, the One Mighty and Strong of 85. And what Mormons have then done is separated Jesus, as understood from the Gospel passage, and also believing the Book of Mormon to be an actual history, therefore actual Jesus came to America, despite the conflicts of Scripture. I did one yesterday on that. <clears throat> you can see it on the thumbnail. And that this other person who will uh, be involved in leading Mormons in this exodus. He's going to be the prophet of the church, the president of the church. And Mormons are steadfast and firm. That is the only interpretation. And then I come along and I start telling you uh, learning of the Jews. And Mormons are all upset. No, that's not what I believe. No, that's false, Travis. You're wrong because I believe differently. <laughs> but again, the current church did not follow anything of Joseph Smith. Brigham Young completely changed it and said, oh yeah, that Joseph was going to do this. He was doing it in secret. So when the United States said, no, you can't do this, you have to stop, you're disincorporated, you're done, you're finished. Well, the new church in 1923 couldn't restore Brigham's church. And they still had to maintain Joseph as the founder. But they don't like learning of the Jews. If you look at your manuals, where is it talking about it? No, nowhere. Hmm. Talks about Egyptian as a speculation as to what the reformed Egyptian is. But no, nope. nothing about the learning of the Jews. And so Nelson, this last conference, during Passover, with Moses and the Exodus, nothing. No, nope. Easter Bunny, Jesus, resurrection only. Do you not understand that? That's one of the conflicts in the Book of Mormon with the Gospels. Is that concept of ascension is essential in Mormon doctrine. And Nelson, nope, doesn't exist either. Moses, Exodus, Passover, creeping death, nope, None of it. Doesn't happen, didn't happen. We're rewriting Bible. So, sorry Jews, Mormons are rewriting your Bible. Who do the Jews understand as the Christ? They refer to him mostly by our English corruption of Messiah. It's more like Messiah. I can't do the guttural K's. It's the ket for cam. Ham. And thus Kemet is the land of Egypt. So Mitzrayim, no, remove it. 
extra sun. <laughs> That's why you're so confused, Jews. Get rid of it. Cam is Egypt. That's why it was named after him and given the T, which is the feminine singular for the land. think they would know this. Nope, they don't. So there, you just got exclusive knowledge from me. <coughs> and what you see Mormons doing because of Brigham Young and then the 1923 reincorporated church is they've now separated the Jewish understanding that Joseph Smith had about the Christ and separated him from Jesus. They're two separate people now rather than one individual just with multiple different names for him. And he's human. He's not going to come from outer space. Those are signs in the heavens. says right in the scriptures and so what does that mean then so yes now you understand why the Book of Mormon is not an actual history because we're waiting for the Messiah to be born and raised in the Mormon church as 103 16 tells us did not exist in the Roman period. This is Mormon doctrine. This is what Mormons cannot come to grips with because of the 1923 reincorporation. Which means the Gospels are not history. That's why there's so many errors in them and why you can't really harmonize them. They're all other prophecies for the latter days. This is why he dies and fails to save the Jews. As <laughs> the failed king of, of Judea, king of the Jews. And thus the mockery of the crown of thorns. Because a thorn in Egyptian is very similar to the pyramid shape. It's just the thorn is a little bit thinner, but it's still a delta symbol. In Paleo-Hebrew, the delta symbol is, yes, like the Greek delta. And how is David spelled? With two deltas. So now you can see there's symbolism with the alphabet of Paleo-Hebrew that is attempted to be preserved by the Jew who wrote the Gospels. It wasn't Cata Mateon, Cata Lucas, Cata Marcus, Cata Iona. Those were the common thing to do back then, is to attribute to some other popular person to get people to believe your version. Because if you were putting it your own name, everybody go, eh, no, you weren't there. <laughs> you can't fool us. But, oh, oh, Matthew, oh, yeah, he was there. He could have been a witness. Okay, I'll trust you. And all of them have a different God anyway. If you've not paid attention. Different birthdays, different manners of death. Gotta pay attention. You can't just say, oh, they're supposed to be harmonized? Okay. It's like the person who came out and said, oh, yeah, the Old Testament God is vengeful and wrathful. No, I don't see anywhere where he's vengeful and wrathful. He was merciful and kind the whole way. It was mankind who was wicked and caused their own destruction. 
but if you don't pay attention to your scriptures, you're going to miss it, and you're just going to believe whatever somebody else tells you. Anyway. So what does this mean? The Book of Mormon, not a real history. Guess what? It's also prophecies? because it uses the Bible prophecies and the calendar date system of signs in the heavens. It's right there in the Book of Mormon too. So what does that mean about Joseph Smith's history now? Now do you understand why it's not a real history? But you got all upset at first I didn't do it in a manner in which you individually would accept what I'm telling you. You got offended. You didn't like my manner of speech. You didn't like my manner of presentation. You got upset and justify not liking my video because of the air unit fans that I have to use. Yeah, Joseph Smith history is not an accurate history. It's prophecy. Code. Because that's basically what prophecy is. It's a coded teaching. Not just a, a future event to take place, but there's also symbolism of a moral nature in there as well. And so, uh, for example, in the creation story, uh, you have uh, the creation of uh, humans, animals, and plants. Well, what are they all supposed to do? They're supposed to reproduce. Animals and humans do it through sex. Plants do it from seed planted in the ground. And so when we get to chapter 2, we have it again, but it begins with, now these are the generations, which means human offspring of heaven and earth. If you don't know, it comes from the Egyptian Heliopolis creation glyph with Nut and Geb, heaven and earth. You're going to miss out on what it's trying to tell you. But, what happens? They're created, and they don't repeat the previous commandment in chapter 1, but they're placed in the Garden of Eden. What is a garden? It's a place where vegetation has multiplied filled the earth. See how that works? And so uh, that's what the scriptures are trying to teach is sex ed. I caught that from my run this morning. I was going, oh yeah, that's right. It is all talking about the same subject matter. I was uh, listening to Def Leppard's Woman. religious music <laughs> in the very beginning so there's my theme song that I'll have in the description below but, <laughs> but yeah this is the Mormon God that Mormons have altered Brigham Young first but then the United States said no you can't have that God because that promotes criminal activity of polygamy it's a crime <laughs> Don't think that it's God's way and that it's the United States who's in the wrong. That God's law will prevail. No. Article of Faith number 12, guys. Women are not supposed to be sex slaves and sex trafficked around the earth. Polygamy is wrong. And so, yeah, the, the 1923 church, likewise. And thus, all the confusion 
So when Nelson gets up in conference, ignores all things Jew and promotes Jesus, which I hope you now understand is the fake God of Constantine, merged with the 1923 reinterpretation of the Joseph Smith history and the Book of Mormon as being literal histories. There you have it. I forgot all about it. I had the page up here on the internet. <laughs> and I was looking at the picture over and over again and never got to it. The part about David is that when uh, David A. Bednar became an apostle, and strangely enough, uh, he was put in the Quorum of the Twelve first, and then for five days, he was not an apostle. <laughs> the 2nd of October was when he was in the Quorum of the Twelve, and then an LDS apostle, October 7th, five days later. <laughs> so, I guess they didn't care to, to do it on the same day. Uh, but yeah, everybody in my close circle uh, all understood that uh, David could be that guy, but separated from Jesus. That he'd be the prophet, he'd lead the exodus, and there's still confusion with Salt Lake City, because it's good. Why go back to Missouri? And so then you get Mormons who create the doctrine of the latter days about a secret mission to go to Adam on Diamon. Only selected Mormons who are extremely worthy will get to see Jesus Christ at the great priesthood meeting at Adam on Diamon and build the new Jerusalem temple and blah, blah, blah. But Salt Lake City will still be here and will continue to run things without Mormon knowledge. <laughs> Do you see what happens when you say that, oh yeah, Joseph was doing all this in secret. <laughs> this is what he meant to do. This is what he was planning to do. <laughs> you get Mormons who say, oh, okay, that's our doctrinal principle, the doctrine of secret combinations. Just stray on the wrong path. Get back! <laughs> but yeah, no, David Bednar is not the guy. <laughs> I, even if it were Joseph Smith's understanding, because his name is not supposed to be David, first and foremost. Uh, but he is born in the Planet of the Apes territory, Oakland. Uh, so uh, he has that one thing <laughs> but the wrong day the wrong birth date uh, and all the other prophecies because all prophecies testify of this guy and signs in the heavens all help us to understand who to look for and how to know him and so, again exclusive material that you're not going to get anywhere else because nobody has done the work necessary because the church has led you astray and YouTube is preventing you from watching my videos so if you're seeing this well done you snuck past YouTube 